In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, graciously grant that by the example of Saint Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, over all these things put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, do from the heart, as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that you will receive from the Lord the due payment of the inheritance. Be slaves of the Lord Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Lord, give, give success, success to, to the, the work of our hands. Before the mountains were begotten, and the earth and the world were brought forth from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Lord, Lord give, give success, success to the work of our hands. You turn men back to dust, saying, return O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that is the past, or as a watch of the night. Lord, Lord give, give success, success to the work of our hands. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long hath pity on your servants. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Fill us as daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by their children. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. 
But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our feast today of St. Joseph the Worker is a recent invention. We haven't had it very long. Indeed, inscribing it in our liturgical calendar is a response to the terrible evils accomplished by the socialists. For for socialists, for communists, today is May Day, where they pretend to be the friend of workers but really they are evil revolutionaries. For it is not the true dignity of workers to deprive men of the right of private property. This is church teaching dating back to Pope Leo XIII and the encyclical Rerum Novarum and reiterated by all of the Pope's sense. Private property belongs to the dignity of man because Man is called on a fundamental level to work with his hands for the bread that he eats. These empty-headed college students that think that they should be given free bread so that they can get their, their art PhD that has no use for a job has it completely backwards. Labor is a good thing, not a bad thing. And this is why the church on one hand can condemn the evils of communism, but on the other hand can march with workers on a picket line so that their rights for fair wage and benefits may be defended. This is the heart and core of Catholic social justice, and that's why Catholics played such an instrumental role in the fall of the Soviet Union, as well as in the rise of labor unions in this country. Which brings us to the present day. We should, if we are true Catholics, be deeply concerned that any leader, let alone a governor like Tom Wolfe, would dare ever call labor non-essential. Only a follower of Satan could come up with such an idea. For labor is essential to us because we must work for the bread that we eat with the labor of our hands. And to ever tell another human being that what you do is not essential, that I have higher priorities is such a misreading of human nature, is so destructive to society and virtue in general, that it's the obligation of the church to stand up for the rights of workers, to earn what they eat in defense of their human dignity. I know many people that are suffering right now because they are being prevented from earning the bread that they eat. And it's unjust for the same reasons that the communists in in Russia were unjust, for the same reason that those who deprived laborers of a just wage were unjust. Please, God, perform a miracle of love for us through the intercession of St. Joseph the worker, may we recall that your son, the son of God, performed menial tasks in labor with his father, his foster father, St. Joseph, in order to provide bread for the family in order to eat, and that this was declared good and holy in that town of Bethlehem. St. Joseph the Worker, cure us of our laziness, our indifference, our cruelty, our tyranny, all of these sins. 
Help us to remember that work is good and to honor and reverence everyone who does work as being essential to their very human dignity. May God bless you and God love you. We place before Almighty God these our prayers and petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may the Holy Spirit bless him as he shares Joseph's life of faith and obedience to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in leadership positions in our country and throughout the world, may God encourage them in their decision making and help them meet the needs of their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who deal with chronic illness, may Christ the healer bring them relief and give them the strength they need to endure. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in our faith community, may the Holy Family intercede with them in all their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they rejoice with Saint Joseph and the community of saints in the heavenly kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intercession of this Mass in thanksgiving, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we beg you to hear these prayers and to grant them if they be in accord with your divine and holy will through Christ our Lord. Hey, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and on the commemoration of St. Joseph to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten Son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, and they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away the, the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God through him. Alleluia. Body of Christ. Let us pray. Amen. 
Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Day 9 of the St. Joseph Novena. St. Joseph, you are the faithful protector and intercessor of all who love and venerate you. You know that I have confidence in you and that after jo Jesus and Mary, I come to you as an example for holiness, for you are especially close with God. Therefore, I humbly commend myself with all who are dear to me and all that belong to me to your intercession, I beg of you by your love for Jesus and Mary not to abandon me during life and to assist me at the hour of my death. Glorious Saint Joseph, spouse of the Immaculate Virgin, pray for me to have a pure, humble, charitable mind and perfect resignation to the divine will. Be my guide, my father, and my model through life that I may die as you did in the arms of Jesus and Mary. Loving St. Joseph, faithful follower of Jesus Christ, I raise my heart to you to implore your powerful intercession in obtaining from the divine heart of Jesus the graces necessary for my spiritual and temporal welfare, particularly the grace of a happy death and the special grace I now implore. guardian of the word incarnate, I feel confident that your prayers on my behalf will be graciously heard before the throne of God. Saint Joseph, terror of demons, pray for us. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Prayer to St. Joseph the Worker. Glorious St. Joseph, model of all who are devoted to labor, obtain for me the grace to work in the spirit of penance and expiation of my many sins, to work conscientiously by placing love of duty above my inclinations, to graciously and joyously deem it an honor to employ and develop by labor the gifts I've received from God, to work methodically, peacefully, and in moderation and patience without ever shrinking from it through weariness or difficulty to work, above all with purity of intent and unselfishness, having unceasingly before my eyes death and the account I have to render of time lost, talents unused, good not done, and vain complacency and success, so baneful to the work of God. All for the sacred heart of Jesus, all for the immaculate heart of Mary, all to imitate thee, O patriarch Saint Joseph. This shall be my motto for life and eternity. Amen. 